Hello YouTube, this is the DVT Gaming Show. Episode 69, Part 2. Today I'm reviewing... Final Fantasy 6 for the Game Boy Advance, PS1 and the Super Nintendo. Now if you haven't watched Part 1 yet, you've missed absolutely loads. I crammed a lot into Part 1. So this is what you've missed. I, I explained the story for the game, the graphics, the controls, the music, the gameplay. I talked about the the characters, some of the cutscenes, and some other stuff. So if you haven't watched part one yet, you've missed all that. So I really urge you to watch part one before you watch this part, because I crammed a lot into that for you. Anyway, let's pick up where I left off. The next thing I want to talk about in this game are the dungeons. The dungeons in this game are awesome. Some of them are extremely long and very difficult to get through. Can you start out a party? Right, now I've set up my party, I'll finish up talking about the dungeons. The dungeons in this game are awesome, and they're really, really good. One of my favourite dungeons in the entire game is the final dungeon. The final dungeon is a really hard dungeon. It's not just hard because there's loads of enemies in there that'll kill you if they have the chance. It's hard because you have to split your... Tw your... 13 characters in the three separate teams, three separate teams of four, and you and you your three teams you must search the entire dungeon and collect all the stuff and finally defeat Kefka. The last dungeon is extremely confusing as well, but I still love it. It's one of the best dungeons I've ever seen in a Final Fantasy game. Um, are you good about this game? Are the bosses? The bosses in this game are, are a real challenge and can be extremely hard. Um, you know what I'm really good about this game is the last boss. Now, the last boss is of of the Kefka, but. Before you fight Kefka, you will fight several bosses at once. And the last dungeon really throws everything it has at you. So, make sure that all four of your teams are high enough level and got enough spells because if you haven't, nine times out of ten you'll get massacred by those things. I'm not kidding. These guys don't fuck around. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about this game are spells. Now, to learn spells in this game, it's quite ingenious what they've done. Let me explain it to you. Basically, throughout the game, you will find espers. And sometimes these espers will give you their powers willingly to help you after you helping them. Or sometimes you may have to fight them and they'll give up their powers because they're too weak. It depends, really. Basically, if I want to learn a certain spell, I pick the Esper that I've found, click on it, and it'll come to a menu. This menu will tell us spells that, that Esper can teach me. The spells that this Esper can teach me are Meltdown and Meteor. And each spell will take a, a certain number of battles to learn. It, every battle that you do, you will accumulate AP, also known as ability points, and these ability points will eventually add up so you'll learn the spells. Um, and the other part of the game are the espers themselves. Throughout the game, once you um, collect an esper, you can um, summon one to the battle and destroy everything in your path. Let me just show you one. Right, I'll find a battle, then I'll show you that. Well, the Vespers. Right, here's the Legend of Vespers, known as the Hammett. 
You will recognise him. Now that looks awesome. I know 3D graphics look good, but that is just awesome. And, the, and that's what the Espers look like. Uh, and you can about this game and the vehicles. You, you will only obtain two airships throughout the game. The first airship you actually get is actually better than the second one, in my opinion. But, other than, but, despite that, both the airships are still really good. In the first game are the character's abilities. The characters have several abilities which you, which you can learn and use to your advantage. I already told you about them in part one, but all of them, I promise you, are really good. That's all the good stuff I'm thinking for about this game. Now, let's go to the bad stuff. Right, the best about five hundred six. Well, I don't really that much of it. It's such an awesome game, but the only problems that I found first things first. The map is tiny. Why in the hell is the map so small on the um on the overworld screen? Basically, you take this little character and your bottom right corner screen there's this tiny map which tells you where you're going. The map is far too small. It's very difficult to tell you where you want to tell where you are. And the other problem with the map is why in the hell is it transparent? In other words, see through. If it was a solid picture, it would be a lot easier to tell what was going on. The other problem with the map is that the markers are also see through. The marker that tells you where you are is in a tiny red dot. And the maps for the towns, kids, and other stuff are all white dots. And it's really difficult to tell what you're doing with this map. I don't see why the game designers couldn't have put a better map in the game. I mean, the Game Boy Advance is more than capable. So the map in the game is not really that useful. You're better off just going on the internet, printing out one of these babies. Then you can alter it, put different markers on, and actually see where you're going for once. Um, and your best game are uh, the blitz abilities. The blitz abilities are awesome as long as you can get them to work. Basically, you pick the blitz ability, and you pick the ability that you want to do, and then you have to insert a certain button combination using the arrow pad and the A and B buttons and the L and R buttons. But the only big problem with this is the game doesn't tell you when to put the buttons in. If it told you when to put the buttons in, it will allow you to pull these abilities off. So basically, I never actually use them, but I would love to use them if the game actually told me when to put them in. But that's all the bad stuff I can think about it, like I can think of. But other than that, it's a, this is a very good Final Fantasy game. I definitely suggest you play it. Even if you've already played it before, it's just really, really good. And it's definitely worth picking up. And plus, if you get the Game Boy Advance version, you can take it with you. So I give Final Fantasy VI on the PS1, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy Advance a free. 0.5 out of 5. It's a really good five answer you get, but I definitely suggest you play it. My next review will be a quite a new game. Mario Kart Wii for Nintendo Wii. But I ain't got time for that today, YouTube. So let's so I'll leave it for next time. Until then, bye.